what's going on everybody this is Keegan here and welcome back to my channel and I'm back with a brand new video for you guys and today I'm bringing you guys another collection video for you guys so today I'm going to be showing you guys my blu-ray and 4k blu-ray collection or 4k ultra hd whatever you want to call them so back in February last year I did a video showing off my blu-rays and a lot of you guys seem to enjoy that video. And since then, my, my collection has increased quite a bit. And also at that time, I started collecting 4K Blu-rays back in June. So last year, I had a total of 133 Blu-rays. And this year, I have a total of 247 Blu-rays. And I have 16 4K Blu-rays. And I know I don't have very many 4K Blu-rays. That's mostly because I started collecting them back in June. But it'll get bigger one day, my collection of 4Ks. So, this is not going to be in any specific order. It's all going to be in alphabetical order. We're going to go through my box sets, my Blu-rays and 4Ks, and my TV shows. And then that's pretty much the order we're going to do it in. And um, one more thing. There are actually three new Blu-rays that are in this collection that I got yesterday that I'm actually going to be making a DVD and Blu-ray update video later on today. So I'll point out the new Blu-rays that I got yesterday. So I don't really have too much else to say, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. And let's dive into my Blu-ray and 4K Blu-ray collection. And really quickly before we start the collection, let's take a look at my shelf here. We're going to start up there with my box set all the way down to the fifth row. And the last row just has random stuff on it. And I know my shelf is kind of dusty, but eh, it's no big deal. I can dust it later. So let's just, without further ado, let's dive into my collection. So starting up here with the very top of my shelf, we have my box sets. And we're going to start up here with 2001 A Space Odyssey 4K box set. I bought this box set at Best Buy back in July, and believe it or not, I still haven't seen it yet, but I'll probably give it a watch at some point. And before we continue, I just want to let you guys know, you're going to hear me say it a lot in this video, you're going to hear me say I haven't seen this movie yet or that movie yet, mostly because a lot of these Blu-rays I picked up recently, and some of them I've had for a while or a long time, but just never really got around to watching them yet, so just want to let you guys know, so... Anyways, moving on, we have the Before Trilogy on Criterion, which includes Before Sunrise, Before Sunset, and Before Midnight. Really, really great trilogy from Richard Linklater. I think um, Before Sunrise is the best, though. The other two movies are great, though, but I just think the first one's the best. And then we have the Born Trilogy, which includes the Born Identity, Born Supremacy, and Born Ultimatum. It doesn't include Born Legacy or Jason Bourne. But whatever. I think the first three Bourne movies are the only ones worth watching. The other two movies were okay though. But I'll probably get those two eventually. And then we move on to the Dark Knight trilogy. Which has Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises. Which all of them are, all of them are great movies. But I think The Dark Knight is the best one out of all of them. But the other two movies are still good. And then we have the Die Hard collection, which includes Die Hard, Die Hard 2, Die Hard with a Vengeance, Live Free or Die Hard, and A Good Day to Die Hard. The first Die Hard is a classic and the best one in the series. Die Hard 2 and Die Hard with a Vengeance were both pretty good, and Live Free or Die Hard was pretty good too, and A Good Day to Die Hard was just garbage. I hated A Good Day to Die Hard. And we have the Hills Have Eyes 2 unrated collection, which includes both... The Hills Have Eyes 1 and 2, which are the remakes, not the originals from Wes Craven, but the the remakes. Uh, I haven't watched those ones yet. And then we have The Human Centipede, the complete sequence, which includes all three of The Human Centipede movies. I do believe that that set might be out of print. I'm not sure, though. But I haven't seen those three movies yet, but I hear they're pretty notorious movies. But I haven't watched them yet. I'll probably watch them at some point. And then we have this really awesome Friday the 13th collection from Screen Factory. I pre-ordered it on Amazon and I got it sometime after it came out. Really, really great box set. It's one of my favorite box sets that I own. And then we have the James Bond collection 
from which includes all the James Bond movies from Doctor No all the way down to Spectre. Uh, another really great box set. I can't wait for the new James Bond movie, No Time to Die. I think that's what it was called. But I can't wait for it. It sucks. It got pushed back to October. And this one's not really a box set. This is the Jaws on VHS clamshell Blu-ray that I bought at Best Buy three years ago. It's really cool. I just have it up there because it's really cool. And then we have the Lord of the Rings, the motion picture trilogy on 4K, which includes all three of the Lord of the Rings movies and includes both the theatrical and extended versions of the movie. Um, I haven't watched the extended versions, but I've seen the regular versions. I probably will watch the extended versions at some point, but I know they're really, really long, especially the third movie, the extended version of it's like four hours long or something. But I'll probably get those ones to watch at some point. And then we have the Resident Evil collection, which includes Resident Evil, Resident Evil Apocalypse, Resident Evil Extinction, Resident Evil Afterlife, and Resident Evil Retribution. And it's missing um, Resident Evil The Final Chapter, but I'll probably get that one at some point. I've only seen the first Resident Evil movie. I haven't gotten around to watching the other Resident Evil movies. And I actually just got that box set very recently. Same thing with the um, that Bourne Trilogy box set. And then we move on to The Sopranos, The Complete Series, which is one of my all-time favorite TV shows. It's just a great show and definitely one of HBO's best shows. And then we have the West Side Story 50th Anniversary Limited Edition box set, which is a really, really rare box set. I found this one at um, Shoppers Drug Mart for like $5, I believe is how much I paid for it. It's a pretty rare box set and a really nice box set. Although, I wasn't really a big fan of the movie itself, but it's still a really cool box set. And I know there's a remake of it supposed to be coming out later on this year. And the last one for box sets, we have the X-Men collection on Blu-ray, which includes X-Men, X2, X-Men United, X-Men The Last Stand, X-Men First Class, X-Men Days of Future Past, and X-Men Apocalypse. Uh, I've always seen the first three X-Men movies. I haven't gotten around to watching the other three X-Men movies yet. And it's missing uh, Dark Phoenix, which I hear Dark Phoenix is supposed to be horrible from what I hear. But uh, the first two X-Men movies are good, besides the that the director is a scumbag, Brian Zinger. Uh, X-Men The Last Stand was okay. And like I said, I haven't seen First Class, Days of Future Past, and Apocalypse. I haven't seen those ones yet. So that's it for the top row with my box sets. So now let's move on to the first row. Alright, so now we're on the first row. And we're going to start this row off with 310 to Yuma, the remake. Um, I've only watched it once a few years ago, but from what I remember, I remember it being a pretty good movie. I haven't seen the original 310 to Yuma, but maybe I'll check it out at some point. And I know there's a Criterion Collection release of the original movie. And then next up we have 10 Cloverfield Lane Steelbook, which is the very first Steelbook I ever bought. I bought this one at Best Buy back in 2016. So I had this box set for almost five years. A uh, really cool box set, and uh, it's a good movie. I don't have Cloverfield on Blu-ray, but I'll probably get that on Blu-ray at some point. Anyways, next up we have uh, 21 Grams, which is a really, really great movie. Really good performances, and it's a, it's a really good movie from Alejandro Gonz Gonzalez and Haritu. I don't know how you pronounce his name. He also directed Birdman, The Revenant. And Amaros Peros, or however you pronounce that one movie. But a uh, really, really great movie. And then we have 30 Days a Night. A uh, pretty underrated vampire movie. Not necessarily the best vampire movie, but I enjoyed it for what it is. It's a fun, fun little vampire movie to watch. And then we have The Four Year Old Virgin. It's a classic. And then we have uh, 500 Days of Summer. Um, I got this one on Amazon about a year ago and believe it or not I still haven't seen it yet but I hear it's supposed to be pretty good and then we have another one that I haven't seen yet adaptation I uh, haven't watched it yet but I'll probably give it a watch at some point and then we have Alita Battle Angel once again haven't watched it yet and we have Ameri no, no. Almost Famous the bootleg cut director's cut whatever you want to call it uh, once again, I haven't seen it yet, but I hear great things about it. I should probably give it a watch at some point. 
And then we have American Gangster on 4K. Uh, awesome movie. Probably my favorite Ridley Scott movie that he directed. And definitely one of Denzel Washington's uh, best performances. It's, it's just an awesome movie. And we have American Hustle. I uh, really enjoyed this movie. Really good performances. And definitely one of Amy Adams, one of all the actors in this movie. They did a really good job in it. It's just an awesome movie. And we have American Psycho. It's a classic movie. It's kind of a meme these days with the meme where he's just walking in the hall with his headphones on or whatever. But uh, it's a classic. And I know there's a 4K release of that one. And then we have Apocalypto, which this Blu-ray is out of print and pretty hard to find. A uh, pretty good Mel Gibson directed movie. It's pretty good. I enjoyed it for what it was. And then we have Arrival. I've only watched it once, like, f three or four years ago. I really, really enjoyed it. I haven't watched it since I watched it, but I'd like to give it a watch again sometime. I really, really enjoyed it. It's a really good sci-fi movie. Then we have Atomic Blonde on 4K. A uh, really underrated action movie. I enjoyed it. Some people liked it. Some people didn't like it. But I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it had some really good cinematography and some good action sequences. I remember seeing this one in theaters. But uh, I enjoyed it for what it was. It was a pretty good movie. Next up we have Takashi, Takashi Miike's Audition Arrow video. One of the only Arrow videos that I own. Uh, really good Japanese uh, thriller, horror thriller movie. It's kind of slow, but it's I still really enjoyed it for what it was. But... It's a, it's a really good movie. And we have The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Uh, really underrated horror movie from the, the mid-2010s. I enjoyed it. And it's, uh, it's pretty creepy. I enjoyed it. I'm not going to say too many things about each thing that I own because it's going to be a little bit too long. Well, this video is going to be pretty long anyways. So yeah, next up we have Avatar. Um, good movie, but I honestly don't think a sequel is really necessary. I know there's a sequel supposed to be coming out, but there's going to be like five of these movies. But a sequel, in my opinion, is not necessary. It should have just been a standalone. I'm mean, just a standalone movie, but it is what it is. But it's still a good movie, though, nonetheless. Avatar. I remember seeing it in theaters. And we have uh, Baby Driver. I uh, really enjoyed it, regardless of Kevin Spacey and Ansel Elgort being sexual predators. But, yeah. But besides that, it's it's a good movie. I really enjoyed it. I remember seeing it in theaters the day after my 16th birthday with my brother. It's a good movie. Next up, we, oh. Next up we have Bad Santa, the unrated version and director's cut. Uh, very, very funny movie. I watch it almost every Christmas, sometimes. It's a, it's a very funny movie. It's actually uh, John Ritter's last movie he was in, and then he passed away the same year this movie came out. But uh, great movie. Rest in peace, John Ritter and Bernie Mac. And then we have, uh, next up, we have uh, The Bank Job. I uh, picked this one up fairly recently. I still haven't watched it yet, but it looks like a pretty good movie, pretty good heist movie. Uh, next up, we have Batman, the 1989 movie. Um, awesome movie. I loved this movie when I was younger, and I still like it to this day. It's definitely one of the best Batman movies ever made. It's just an awesome movie. And Jack Nicholson did a good job playing as the Joker in that movie. Uh, next up, we have Battle Royale. Uh, picked this one up two months ago, and still haven't watched it yet. But I'll probably get around to watching it pretty soon. But I don't know when. Uh, next up we have Before the Devil Knows You're Dead. This is the original release, not the Screen Factory release. Uh, this one's out of print, but and it's pretty hard to find. Um, I found this one back in January. Yeah, it was January. Uh, really, really good movie. I actually watched it on Prime Video last year, and I really, really enjoyed it. And then I found this one at Revolver, and I went ahead and picked it up. Uh, really good movie, really underrated movie. And Philip Seymour Hoffman does a good job in it. Uh, next up we have The Big Lebowski. That's like your opinion, man. <laughs> I actually just watched this movie for the first time over the summer, and I loved it. It was a great movie. Great performances. I think John Goodman did the best 
was the best character in the movie. His character, Walter. Smokey, this is not Nom. This is bowling. There are rules. <laughs> uh, it's an awesome movie. It's definitely one of my favorites from the Coen brothers. Next up, we have Black Hawk Down on 4K. I forgot to mention that The Big Lebowski was on 4K. But anyways, Black Hawk Down... I uh, haven't watched it yet, but I hear really good things about it, so I'll have to give it a watch at some point. I got this one on Amazon back in August, but haven't watched it yet. It's supposed to be good, though. Uh, next up, we have Black Swan. I really enjoyed this movie. It's pretty weird, kind of creepy, and it's not a horror movie or anything. It's a, it's a psychological thriller. But, uh, really, really good movie. Natalie Portman does a great job in it, and, uh, Definitely one of the best movies from the last decade. Oh. Next up we have Black Snake Moan. Um, haven't watched it yet. But it looks like a pretty good movie. It's from the director of Hustle and Flow. Which I do have on Blu-ray. But you'll see that later on in this video. But uh, once again haven't seen it yet. But hopefully it'll be good. Next up we have Blade Runner. And the sequel, Blade Runner 2049, both great sci-fi movies, definitely one of the best sci-fi movies ever made. And I absolutely loved Blade Runner 2049. I actually, come to think of it, I actually like it better than the first one. But don't get me wrong, the first one's still a great movie, but I like 2049 better. But that's my opinion, though, at least. Next up, we have Blue is the Warmest Color on Criterion, the first Criterion in this video. Uh, really good French film, besides that one scene that drags on for like six minutes, that sex scene that literally goes on for like six or seven minutes. They could have just cut it down to like maybe two minutes, not six minutes. But I guess that's why this movie got the NC-17 rating. But overall, a really, really good French film. I really, really enjoyed it. It's a beautiful film. Next up, we have Blue Velvet. Um, really good David Lynch movie. It's also the first David Lynch movie I ever watched and I know there's a Criterion collection release of it I'd like to get the Criterion of it at some point Dang my arms getting tired but I gotta power through this video next up is Bohemian Rhapsody uh, Besides the, that the director is a scumbag Brian Zinger not really gonna get into that in this video I enjoyed the movie for what it is, though. It's not the best, but I still enjoyed it for what it is. And I do like Queen. A uh, really good band. Then we have Boogie Nights. Uh, great movie. It's definitely one of... It's actually one of Mark Wahlberg's early movies. I think this was actually his fourth movie he was in or something. But I can't remember, though. But it's a really, really good movie. It's an awesome movie. Next up, we have Boys in the Hood. Uh, really, really good movie. Kind of a sad movie, too. Well, I don't really want to spoil it, but I did a review of this one on my channel a little while ago. Check it out if you haven't. But if you haven't seen Boys in the Hood, definitely check it out. It's it's a fantastic movie. Next up is Broke Out Mountain. I wish I knew how to quit you. Uh, really, really great movie. Definitely one of Heath Ledger's best movies that he was in. It's a shame that he passed away back in 2008. And Jake Gyllenhaal did a great job in it. And I'm surprised this movie was actually filmed in Alberta, in uh, Calgary. Which, if you've been on my channel for a while, you'll know that I'm, I'm a Canadian. And I'm actually from Alberta. But uh, that's really cool that this movie was filmed in Calgary. But a uh, really great movie. Next up is Candyman Scream Factory. This is the original. Uh, pretty good movie. I know there's a remake coming out. It was actually supposed to be coming out last year, but... Well, I think we all know why that didn't happen. Next up is Cape Fear, the original. Uh, haven't watched it yet, but I know there's a remake from Mart Scorsese, but I'll probably get that one at some point. Uh, next up is Capote. Uh, good movie. Really enjoyed it. Philip Seymour Hoffman did a good job in it. Uh, may he rest in peace. Next up is Carlito's Way. A uh, really good Brian De Palmer film. Probably my second favorite Brian De Palmer movie next to Scarface. But uh, just a good movie. I did a review of it a little while ago. Then we have Casino, which is a Martin Scorsese movie. And I really, really enjoyed this movie. It's definitely one of Martin Scorsese's best movies. And probably Martin Scorsese's most violent movie. 
But uh, just an awesome movie. Next up we have Child's Play, the original. This is a Screen Factory. I uh, haven't watched it yet. Then we have Citizen Kane. Um, not the greatest movie in the world. Some people say it's the greatest movie of all time. Well, that kind of depends on who you ask. But I enjoyed it, but I wouldn't say it's the greatest movie of all time. But it's certainly an important movie to watch for any movie buffs out there. Uh, next up is Climax. I uh, picked this one up a while ago. Still haven't watched it yet, but I'd like to give it a watch at some point. It's supposed to be a really trippy movie. Next up is A Clockwork Orange, another Stanley Kubrick movie. Um, just a great and really bizarre movie. And I know that this movie is actually going to be getting a 4K release later on this year. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but I know it's going to be getting a 4K release sometime soon. I'll probably pick that up. Uh, next up we have uh, Closer. I really enjoyed this movie. I really like it. It's... I do like the dialogue in it, too. It has some interesting dialogue, if you know what I mean. Next up is Cold Pursuit. It was an alright movie. Not the best. It was just kind of just a generic revenge flick. You basically got this guy going around killing all these guys that were involved with the killing of his son. Um, it was, it was alright. I know it's actually a remake of a, a Norwegian movie, I believe believe but i'm not sure i know it's supposed to be a remake of something else though uh next up is collateral um picked this one up a while ago haven't seen it yet but i know it does have a 4k release of it next is coming to america which i actually just watched this movie last night and i thought it was pretty good and it was pretty funny and i know the sequel is actually going to be coming out this friday on amazon prime video and i'll probably check it out Next up is The Crazies, the, the remake. Uh, I haven't seen the original, but I have seen the remake, and I thought it was a pretty good and pretty crazy movie, too. I'll probably check out the original movie someday. Next up is Dallas Buyers Club. Uh, excellent movie. Definitely one of Matthew McConaughey's best movies he was in. I plan to do a review of this movie at some point on my channel, but a uh, really, really great movie. It's a truly fantastic movie. Next up is Dances with Wolves Steelbook. This is a Shout Factory Steelbook. Cool Steelbook and a good movie. It's kind of... I think that's the movie that inspired Avatar. I don't know. Avatar is a very similar movie. If, you, if you've seen both movies, you know what I mean. Next up we have Dark Shadows. A pretty underrated uh, Johnny Depp movie that he was in. I enjoyed it for, for what it was. It's not the best, but I enjoyed it for what it was. Next up is Dead Poet Society. Oh, Captain, my captain. Watch this one over the summer, and it's a truly fantastic movie, and I really, really enjoyed it. It's just an awesome movie. I'll definitely watch that movie again someday. It's definitely one of Robin Williams' best movies. May he rest in peace. Next up is Death Wish, the original, and this is a steelbook. I picked it up a couple months ago, and I haven't watched it yet probably check that out eventually next up we have the departed my favorite martin scorsese movie it's hard to believe that this year will mark the 15th anniversary of when this movie was released but uh awesome movie and i love the ending in that movie too i don't want to spoil it but if you've seen the movie you know what i'm talking about next up is the descent original unrated cut picked this one up like two months ago haven't watched it yet, but I've been wanting to watch it for a long time, and I probably will give it a watch sometime soon, and maybe I'll do a review of it at some point. Uh, next up, we have Despicable Me. Uh, good movie, but I don't know. It's I don't hate it, but it's it's not bad. But I don't have the other Despicable Me movies. I'm just not really in a rush to getting them all, but I have seen them all. Uh, the second Despicable Me movie was pretty good. Um, I didn't like the third Despicable Me movie, and I thought Minions was alright. It was, nah, it was just, I don't know. Moving on, we have, uh, The Devil's Backbone Criterion, which I haven't watched it yet. I'll probably give it a watch at some point. 
The next one is The Devil's Rejects, which this is actually the sequel to House of a Thousand Corpses, which I don't have House of a Thousand Corpses, but I have seen it, and I do enjoy House of a Thousand Corpses. Uh, this movie, I picked this one up about a month ago, and I still haven't seen it yet. I'll probably give it a watch eventually. And the last one for this row is Django. Django. I don't know why I did that. Um, Django Unchained, uh, my second favorite Quentin Tarantino movie. It's just an awesome movie, and uh, really good performances in it. So that's the first row, and now let's move on to the second row. All right, on the second row, we have, starting up, we have uh, Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. This is a steelbook, and it's another Stanley Kubrick movie. Uh, great comedy. I really enjoyed it. I got that one at HMV when they were going out of business. Uh, the next one, it's kind of tight here, but I'll just leave this one out, is... The Dragon Tattoo Trilogy, this is the extended edition, which I actually picked this one up, which I actually got this one recently in a collection update video that I did two days ago. This includes um, the girl with the dragon tattoo, the girl who played with fire, and the girl who kicked the hornet's nest. I've seen all three of these movies before on Netflix, but I've never watched the extended edition. But I'll probably check these, movie check these movies out again eventually. And uh, they're really good movies. They're really good Swedish movies. Actually, I'll just leave this one out. Uh, both really, they're all really good Swedish movies. I have seen the um, the American remake that David Fincher directed on Netflix as well. I also really enjoyed that one. I'll probably pick that one up eventually. So, anyways, moving up, moving on. Next up, we have uh, Dress to Kill Criterion, an another Brian De Palma film. Uh, pretty good thriller, pretty good erotic thriller. I enjoyed it. Next up, we have Drive, which is an awesome movie. Um, probably Ryan Gosling's best movie that he was in, along with Blade Runner 2049. It's just an awesome movie, and a very violent movie, too. I really enjoyed it. And uh, what's the director's name? Nicholas Wyden Refn. I'd like to check out some of his other movies someday. Next up, we have Easy Rider Steelbook. Uh, cool steelbook. Uh, pretty good movie and kind of a weird movie too. I know there is a, uh, I think there's a Criterion Collection release of it or something. I'm not sure though. I think it does have a Criterion release. I'll probably pick that one up maybe someday. Next up we have El Mariachi and Desperado, which are the first two films in the Desperado trilogy or whatever it was called. I don't have Once Upon a Time in Mexico, but I'll probably pick that one up eventually. Um, I haven't seen these two movies yet, but I'll probably check them out eventually. And I know that El Mariachi was actually Robert Rodriguez's first movie that he directed. But I'll probably check those two movies out eventually. Anyways, next up we have 8th Grade, which is a very, very well done directorial debut for Bo Burnham. I really enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite movies from 2018 and one of my favorite movies of the last decade. It's just a really, really great coming of age film. But if you haven't seen 8th Grade, definitely check it out. It's a great movie. Uh, next up we have Enter the Void, which is a pretty trippy and kind of weird movie from Gase Bruneau, who also directed Climax that you saw on the last row. Um, really good movie. Pretty trippy. Pretty weird. Although it is a little bit long. It is pretty long. Where is the running time? 161 minutes. It's a little bit too long, but I still enjoyed it for what it is. I would definitely recommend it if you haven't seen it. Although, I wouldn't watch it if you are if you are prone to seizures because there's a lot of flashing lights in it. But uh, if that's not an issue for you, definitely check it out. Anyways, next up we have The Evil Dead, the original. Um, I think this might have a 4K Blu-ray release. I'm not sure though, but... Evil Dead, awesome movie. I don't have Evil Dead 2 or Army of Darkness or the the remake, but I'll probably get those movies eventually. But I just, for now, I only have the first Evil Dead movie. Next up, we have John, John Carpenter's Escape from New York Steelbook. This is a Screen Factory Steelbook. I really like this Steelbook. Uh, pretty good movie. I don't think Escape from Los Angeles has, or Escape from L.A. has, a Screen Factory release, but I think it might be getting a Screen Factory release at some point, but I'm not sure, though. 
Next up, we have The Exorcism of Emily Rose. I've only watched it once, like, five years ago, and I remember it being a pretty solid movie. This was more of a court movie than a horror movie, but it was pretty good, though, from what I remember. <clears throat> Anyways, next up we have Eyes Wide Shut, which is the final Stanley Kubrick movie. Uh, really good Stanley Kubrick movie, and this was actually his final movie, like I said before. And uh, it's a pretty weird movie, too, but I enjoyed it for, for what it was. Next up, we have Fargo, another Coen Brothers movie that I haven't seen yet, but I'll probably give it a watch at some point. Uh, next up, we have Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Watched this one for the first time a couple months ago. Uh, pretty funny movie. I really enjoyed it. And I know that this movie is actually going to be getting a, a Criterion Collection release later on this year. I'll probably get that one someday, too, and probably get rid of this copy. But uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, uh, great comedy. Next up we have The Fault in Our Stars, the extended edition. Uh, good movie, kind of a sad movie, but I enjoyed it still. Next up we have A Few Good Men. Sorry for the glare, by the way. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> um, a Few Good Men, a uh, great movie, really good court movie. Next up, we have Fight Club, another David Fincher movie. No, actually, the first David Fincher movie I'm showing off in this video. Um, awesome movie, and the book to it is also great. Uh, next up is Flight, which I actually recently got this one. You might remember me showing in a collection update video that I made two days ago. I um, haven't seen it yet, but I've been wanting to watch it for a little while. Maybe it'll be good. Next up, we have Friday the 13th Steelbook. This is the original. Even though I already own this movie in the Friday the 13th collection box set, I'm still going to keep this Steelbook. It's a cool Steelbook. I love my Steelbooks. I'll never get rid of my Steelbooks. Anyways, next up, we have The Frighteners. I uh, found this one at Walmart in the $5 bargain bin. I uh, haven't seen it yet, but I know it's a Peter Jackson movie, but hopefully it'll be good. Next up is From Paris with Love. This is in a slipcover. I uh, picked this one up about a month ago at, um, where was it? At a Goodwill. Um, haven't seen it yet, but hopefully it'll be good. Next up we have Full Metal Jacket, another Stanley Kubrick movie. Uh, classic. It's definitely one of Stanley Kubrick's best movies. And I know there's a 4K release of it. I'll probably get that one someday. Next up, we have Funny People, a Judd Apatow movie who also directed The 40-Year-Old Virgin. I uh, picked this one up the same place I bought from Paris with Love, and again, haven't seen it yet. Next up is The Game Criterion. Um, this is a David Fincher one. Uh, good movie. I bought this one at HMV when they were going out of business. Sucks they went out of business. I loved HMV. Next up, we have another Martin Scorsese movie, and that's Gangs in New York. Uh, awesome movie. Daniel Day-Lewis does a great job as the villain, Bill the Butcher. And a pretty long movie, too. It's uh, 200 and, I mean, 2 hours and 46 minutes. But uh, but other than that, it's worth it. It's a really good Martin Scorsese movie. And a pretty violent movie, too. Next up, we have Ghost in the Shell, the original... And the live action remake Steelbook. Let's start with this one first. Um, really cool Steelbook. Uh, I'm not really too big into anime, but this movie is really good. And I know that this is the movie that inspired The Matrix, I believe. But uh, really cool. Uh, nice Steelbook and a good movie. And the remake, however, I haven't, actu I haven't actually watched it yet. But I'll probably give it a watch at some point. I know it got mixed reviews, but I haven't watched it yet. I'll probably review it someday when I watch it. Next up it is Gladiator on 4K. Um, I've only seen bits and pieces of it, but I haven't watched the whole thing all the way to the end. But from what I've seen, I think it's a pretty good movie from what I've seen. Next is Glass. It's an M. Night Shyamalan movie. And this is the follow-up to Unbreakable and Split, which I have both of those movies on DVD. 
Um, I didn't really like this movie that much. I don't know. It just, I don't know. I just wasn't really a big fan of it for some reason. I don't know. I just didn't like it. Next, we have The Godfather, The Couple of Restoration, which includes The Godfather, The Godfather Part 2, and The Godfather Part 3, which... The Godfather is a classic, and I loved The Godfather Part 2. I think The Godfather Part 2 is my favorite movie in this series. And I didn't mind Godfather Part 3. I know some people didn't like Godfather Part 3, but I didn't mind it. And I know there's a new version of The Godfather Part 3 called The Death of Michael Corleone or something. I haven't checked it out yet. I'll probably check that one out eventually. Next up is another David Fincher movie, and this one's backwards, and that is Gone Girl. Uh, I've been meaning to watch this one for a while. I hear nothing but great things about it, but I haven't seen it yet, but I hear great things about it. But I'll give it a watch at some point. Next up, we have Gone with the Wind. This is the 70th anniversary edition. I uh, haven't seen it yet. It's supposed to be a really long movie. It's 233 minutes, so that's almost four hours long. Um, I hear great things about it, but I'll have to give it a watch at some point. I haven't watched it mostly because of its running time, but I'll give it a watch sometime soon. Next up is Good Time. I uh, haven't seen it yet. I hear great things about it, and I know it's from the same directors of Uncut Gems, which Uncut Gems is a great movie, by the way. But I, uh, once again, haven't seen it yet. Next up is Good Morning Vietnam. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Uh, this is the 25th anniversary edition, and Robin Williams is in it. I got this Blu-ray for my birthday back in July, and I haven't seen it yet. I probably will give it a watch sometime soon. I hear good things about it. And uh, rest in peace, Robin Williams. Next up is another. W next up is one of my favorite movies, and that is The Goonies. Hey, you guys! <laughs> But uh, Goonies, it's a classic. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And I know that it, ha it got a 4K release a couple months ago. I'll probably pick up the 4K release of it at some point. Next up is The Grand Budapest Hotel Criterion. Uh, it's a Wes Anderson movie. I uh, haven't watched it yet, but I've been meaning to watch it for a long time. And I picked this one up about a month ago. Uh, once again, haven't seen it yet, but I hear great things about it. Next up, we have Guardians of the Galaxy and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. The only two MCU movies that I own at the moment. I'll probably get the other MCU movies at some point. I'm just not really in a big rush to getting them. But uh, the first, Guardians of the Galaxy, is a good movie. The second one, not as good as the first one, but I still thought it was pretty good. But I think the first one was better. Anyways, next up is Hacksaw Ridge, a really, really great war movie. I'd like to get the 4K of this one at some point. Mel Gibson did a good job directing that one. Next up, we have The Hangover Part 2. I don't have The Hangover 1 or 3, but I'll probably get those two eventually. But The Hangover Part 2 is a really funny movie, though I think the first one was better. But Part 2 is still pretty good. I know some people didn't like the second one, but I enjoyed it for what it was. Next up, we have... John Carpenter's Halloween, this is the original, and this is on 4K. This movie looks amazing on 4K, and it's one of my favorite horror movies. I love this movie. And it's the only Halloween movie that I own at the moment. I'll get the other Halloween movies eventually. Next up is Hardcore Henry. Uh, picked this one up a couple months ago, haven't seen it yet. Next up we have another Quentin Tarantino movie, The Hateful Eight. Uh, good movie, not my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie, but I still enjoyed it for what it was. Next up is Hell or High Water. Uh, I've only seen it once like four years ago, but I remember really enjoying it. I'd like to give it a second watch at some point though. Next up is Her, one of my all-time favorite movies. It's just a great movie. I really enjoyed that one. Next up is Hereditary. Um, awesome movie. I really, really enjoyed it. I also liked uh, Midsummer, but we'll get to Midsummer a little bit later in this video. Next up, we have High Tension, one of my favorite horror movies. I really, really enjoyed this one. It's a pretty crazy, pretty gory, and uh, just a fun to watch horror movie. I really enjoyed it. It's a pretty good slasher. Next up is Hitch. Not the best movie in the world, but Will Smith did a good job in it, though. Next up, we have The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies. I don't have the other two Hobbit movies, but I'll probably get those eventually. I'll probably get that on 4K, though. 
and then I'll probably just get rid of my Blu-ray copy of it. Next up is Home Alone. It's a classic. I don't have Home Alone 2 though, but I'll probably get that one someday. Well, these ones are stuck together. Next up is Hotel Rwanda. Pick this one up. Well, you might remember me showing that in that collection update video that I did two days ago. Haven't seen it yet, but I hear great things about it. Next up is Hugo. Um, it's a Mart Scorsese movie, believe it or not. It's the only family-friendly movie that Mart Scorsese directed. Um, haven't seen it yet, but I hear pretty good things about it. Next up we have Hustle and Flow. I uh, really enjoyed this movie. I thought this movie was really underrated. Definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. I really enjoyed it. Next up, we have The Incredibles 2. Not as good as the first one, but I still thought it was pretty good. But the first one is much better, though, in my opinion. Next up is Indian Horse. Um, this is a Canadian movie. Haven't watched it yet. Into the Wild which is our next movie. I really enjoyed this one. It's kind of a sad movie, but it's a, still a great movie, though. Next up, we have Inglorious Bastards, which is the first Quentin Tarantino movie I ever watched. Uh, awesome movie. It's just an awesome movie. Next up, we have The Irishman Criterion, which is my favorite movie from... Oh, shit. Um, which was my favorite movie from 2019. I really, really enjoyed it. It's, a, it's just a great movie. And a pretty long movie, too. It's uh, almost three and a half hours. But it's an awesome movie, though. Really enjoyed it. And the last one for this row is Isle of Dogs, another Wes Anderson movie. Haven't seen it yet, but I'll probably give it a watch at some point soon. So anyways, let's move on to the third row. All right, now we're on the third row, and we're going to start this row off with Jackie Brown, another Quentin Tarantino movie. Uh, I've only watched it once like five years ago and I haven't seen it since I watched it But I remember it being a really good Quentin Tarantino movie probably Quentin Tarantino's least violent movie uh, Next up we have John Wick and the sequel John Wick chapter 2 the first John Wick is a really great action movie It's definitely one of the best action movies of the last decade uh, John Wick 2 however, I got this one. Well, this one's kind of stuck I uh, got this one on my birthday back in July, and I still haven't seen it yet, but I'll probably give it a watch at some point, and I don't have the third one yet, but I'll probably pick that one up eventually. Next up is Joker, one of my favorite movies from 2019. Awesome movie, Aquan Phoenix did a great job in it, and I think he deserved the uh, best supporting, I mean the best actor award from the Oscars, but uh, just an awesome movie, and I'm just going to leave that one out it's kind of tight here uh next up we have jojo rabbit uh, i've been meaning to watch this one for a while and i still haven't seen it yet i'll probably give it a watch at some point soon next up we have kill bill volume one and volume two uh both good movies though i think the first one is a little bit better than the second one well they're really just one movie just in two parts uh both good well, it's a good movie, though. Not my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie, though, but I still enjoyed it. Next up, we have The Killing of a Sacred Deer. Uh, pretty strange movie, but I really, really enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite movies from 2017. Definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. Next up, we have Knives Out. Um, I wasn't really sure if I was going to like it or lot like it or not when I first saw the trailer to it, but when I watched it, I actually liked it a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, really, really great movie. Really great performances from all the cast members, including Ana de Armas. And unfortunately, Christopher Plummer, uh, this guy right there, unfortunately, he recently passed away like a week or two ago. But uh, yeah, he passed away recently. May he rest in peace. He also acted in um, the American remake of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. But yeah, once again, rest in peace, uh, Christopher Plummer. Next up, we have The Kids Are All Right. Um, haven't seen it yet, but I heard that one of the actors in this movie was murdered recently. They were killed in a, um, a carjacking. I can't remember the name of the uh, cast member that was in this movie, but he was uh, murdered a couple months ago. Uh, rest in peace to that actor. Uh, next up, we have Lady Bird. 
Another one that I haven't watched yet, but I should definitely give this one a watch sometime soon. I've been meaning to watch this movie for a while. I hear nothing but great things about it, but I'll definitely give it a watch at some point. Next up, we have Lawless. Once again, haven't seen it yet, but I'll probably give it a watch sometime soon. Next up, we have the Lego movie and the sequel, the Lego movie 2, the second part. Uh, the first one is really good. It's a really good animated movie from the mid-2010s. Um, I was disappointed with the second one, though. Well, the second one was okay. It just wasn't as good as the first one, but I don't know. It was all right. Next up, we have The Life Aquatic with Steve Sazu, Criterion. Uh, pretty underrated Wes Anderson movie, and uh, it's a nice release from Criterion. Next one, next up we have The Lobster, which is one of the three movies that I said at the beginning that are ones that I bought yesterday. This is one of them. I uh, haven't seen it yet, but I want to watch it. I hear it's supposed to be a really strange movie from what I heard. Next up we have Logan, which is an awesome movie. The last X-Men movie to have Hugh Jackman in it. And it's just an awesome movie. Next up we have The Missionist. A uh, really great movie with Christian Bale, but damn, is it weird. Weird, weird, weird. But it's a good movie, though. I liked it. It's a pretty weird movie, though. Next up, we have the first Criterion Collection Blu-ray I ever bought, and that is The Manchurian Candidate. This is the original. Uh, I've only watched it once, but from what I remember, I remember thinking it was really good. I should probably give that a second watch at some point. Next up, Man on Fire, which is one of the last Blu-rays I ever bought at HMV before they went out of business. Uh, pretty underrated movie. I liked it. Next up is the Man With No Name trilogy, which includes uh, Fistful of Dollars for a Few Dollars More and The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Haven't checked them out yet. I actually got that one recently. Next up, we have The Mask of Zorro on 4K. Haven't watched it on 4K yet, but I have seen the movie before a few times, and I thought this movie was pretty underrated. I liked this movie when I was younger. But uh, it's a good movie. Next up we have another Christopher Nolan movie. And that is Memento. Haven't watched it yet. But I know it's one of those movies that you'll have to watch twice to understand it or something. But I hear nothing but great things about it. And I'll have to give it a watch at some point. Uh, next up we have Men of Honor. Um, haven't watched it yet. Got that one recently. Midsummer. It's from the director of... From the director of Hereditary. Awesome movie. I re really, really enjoyed it. It has one of the best movie theater going experiences I've, I've ever had when I saw in theaters. I remember when I, when I saw in theaters, I didn't even watch the trailer for it before I even watched it. So I had no clue what the movie was about. And my god, it blew me away. And it certainly has one of the best and one of the most disturbing opening scenes that I've seen in a movie. But, uh... I could talk hours about this movie, but I'm not going to do that. But uh, Midsummer, awesome movie. I also like it just as much as I enjoyed Hereditary. Next up, we have Midnight Cowboy. I ain't a real cowboy, but I'm sure one hell of a stud. <laughs> uh, great movie. I know there's a Criterion Collection release of it. I'll probably pick that one up at some point. Just a great movie, though. Next up, we have Minority Report Steelbook. Um, I have seen half of it, but I never finished it for some reason. But from what I remember, I remember it being a pretty good movie. I should probably finish it at some point. It's a pretty good and pretty underrated Steven Spielberg movie. Next up is Misery. This is a Screen Factory. I actually did a review of this movie a couple days ago if you want to check it out on my channel. But Misery, great movie. Definitely one of the best Stephen King adaptations ever made. Next up, we have another Wes Anderson movie and another Criterion, and that is Moonrise Kingdom. A uh, really good Wes Anderson movie. Maybe my favorite Wes Anderson movie that I've seen. I really, really enjoyed this movie. It's a, it's a good movie. Next up, we have Moonlight, which is a movie I've been meaning to watch for a while, but never gotten around to watching it. But I probably will give it a watch at some point. I hear great things about it, and it's the movie that took... The Best Picture Award from the Academy Award and the Oscars. So, it should probably be good. I hear nothing but great things about it, though, but I haven't seen it yet. Next up, we have Nightcrawler Steelbook. Uh, really cool steelbook. This is a Best Buy exclusive steelbook. And a really good movie. 
And a really good performance from Jay Gyllenhaal in that movie. Next we have No Country for Old Men. What's the most you've ever lost in a coin toss? Uh, great movie. Definitely one of the Coen Brothers' best movies. Next up we have One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. This is a digi book. And one of the only digi books that I own. I uh, haven't seen it yet. I should probably give it a watch at some point. Uh, next up, we, next up we have One Hour Photo, which is a thriller movie with Robin Williams. Haven't watched it yet. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, another Quentin Tarantino movie. Uh, awesome movie. I really enjoyed it, and one of my favorite movies from 2019. It's an awesome movie. Next up, we have Paranormal Activity and Paranormal Activity 2. I don't have the other Paranormal Activity movies. Uh, the first one's the best one. The second one was pretty good, but the first one will always be the best. I haven't seen the other Paranormal Activity movies, though. I'll probably pick them up eventually. Parasite, really, really great Korean film. And that's the movie that won Best Picture at the Oscars last year. Uh, Phone Booth, a uh, pretty good thriller. And unfortunately, Joel Schumacher, the director of this movie, passed away last year. May he rest in peace. The Piano. I really, really enjoyed this movie. I thought this movie was fantastic. Really good performances. And Holly Hunter did a good job in it. Just a fantastic movie. I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. Uh, the Piano Teacher, this is a Criterion, uh, recently gave this a watch like two or maybe three weeks ago. I really, really enjoyed it. It's a really good French film from Michael Haneke, I believe that's how you pronounce his last name. I'm not sure, but uh, I really enjoyed this one. Next up, we have Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Uh, not the best movie in the world, but I thought it was okay. I wasn't really a big fan of it, but eh, it was okay. Next up, we have Possessor, which is the last movie I ever saw in theaters, and I haven't saw, I haven't been to the theaters in a while since they're closed in my area. I miss going to the movies, but uh, Possessor, pretty good movie. I enjoyed it. It was a pretty bloody movie too, from Brandon Cronenberg, the son of David Cronenberg. Anyways, next up we have Primal Fear. I haven't watched it yet. Portrait of a Lady on Fire. I haven't watched it yet, but I've been wanting to watch it for a while, but. I haven't seen it yet. I'll definitely give it a watch sometime soon. The Prestige, another Christopher Nolan movie. Haven't watched it yet, but I'll give it a watch eventually. Uh, Psycho Steelbook. This is the original. This is a 4K Steelbook, by the way. Uh, great Steelbook and a great movie. I like the Steelbook. Uh, Pulp Fiction, my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie and one of my all-time favorite movies. It's just an awesome movie. Next up, we have A Quiet Place Steelbook. This is a Best Buy exclusive steelbook. Uh, good movie. I enjoyed it. I can't wait for the second one, which was actually supposed to come out last year, but I'm sure we all know why that happened. That didn't happen. Uh, next up, we have Ralph Breaks the Internet, which is the sequel to Wreck-It Ralph, which I have on DVD. Uh, not as good as Wreck-It Ralph, but still pretty good. Next up, we have Ready Player One. Not my favorite Steven Spielberg movie, but it was still pretty good. I think there might I think that movie might be getting a sequel, but I'm not sure though. Next up we have Reservoir Dogs, Quentin Tarantino's first movie, and awesome movie. Next up we have my old copy of Resident Evil, which I'm probably gonna get rid of now that I have it on the uh Resident Evil box set that you've seen earlier in this video. But um it's an alright movie, I guess. Uh next up is Richard Jewell. Haven't watched it yet. Next up we have The Ruins. Um, it was okay. I wasn't really too big of a fan of it, but it was alright. Next up we have Saving Private Ryan on 4K. Awesome movie. Definitely one of Steven Spielberg's best movies. And it's it's just an awesome movie. And maybe the best war movie ever made, but who knows. And next up we have Saw. Saw 2. Saw 3. And Saw 4. The first Saw movie is the best one. It's... Although, I do like the second one. That's my favorite sequel in the series. Um, Saw 3, in my opinion, should have been the last movie. But it was still pretty good. And Saw 4. It should have ended after 3. But I still enjoyed it for what it was. And I believe that the first Saw movie might be getting a 4K release later on this year. But I'm not sure, though. 
And I don't have the other Saw movies, but I'll probably get those ones eventually. So that's it for row three. Now on to row four. All right, now we're on row four. And we're going to start row four off with uh, Scarface on 4K. One of the first 4K Blu-rays I ever bought. This and along with Up is the first um, 4K Blu-rays I ever bought. But Scarface, awesome movie. One of my all-time favorite movies. And it's definitely one of the best movies from the 1980s. It's just an awesome movie. Next up, we have Schindler's List, the 20th Anniversary Limited Edition Blu-ray. Um, I've only watched it once, like, five or six years ago. And I thought it was a really, really great and really depressing Steven Spielberg movie. But uh, it's a truly phenomenal movie. Definitely one of Steven Spielberg's best movies. Uh, next up, we have... It's a little tight here. Uh, Secretary... A uh, really underrated movie with uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal and James Spader in it. It's, uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty good. It came out in uh, it came out in 2002. Uh, pretty underrated movie. If you haven't seen it, I'd recommend checking it out. It's pretty good. I liked it. I did a review of it a while ago, too, on my channel, if you want to check that out. Next up, we have Scott Pilgrim vs. The World Steelbook. I really like the artwork on this steelbook. Um, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, pretty good movie. I've only watched it once, but from what I remembered, I remember it being pretty good. Next up, we have Seven, which is my favorite David Fincher movie. Uh, great movie. Really dark movie, too, but it's a great movie. Really good performances in it. And it's just a classic movie from the 90s. Uh, next up, we have Seven Pounds. Haven't watched it yet. I picked it up a little while ago, but haven't seen it yet. Uh, next up, we have Shame. Uh, really good movie. Pretty, um, um, how would you say it? Pretty freaky movie. I plan to do a review of this movie on my channel sometime this year. Uh, really good movie. Kind of a sad movie, too, but it's a really great movie. And really good performances from both Michael Fassbender and Carey Mulligan in that movie. Uh, next up, we have The Shape of Water. Great movie. Uh, Shaun of the Dead, classic. The Shawshank Redemption, which is my favorite movie of all time. I believe this might be getting a 4K release later on this year, but I'm not sure, though. But Shawshank Redemption, great movie. It's my favorite movie of all time. It's just a fantastic movie. Uh, Shutter Island on 4K. Um, haven't seen it yet. It's a Martin Scorsese movie, but I haven't seen it yet. Next up is Sin City and the sequel, Sin City, A Game to Kill For. Um, the first Sin City is uh, really, really good. While some of the uh, special effects, like the green screen effects, look a little bit outdated. But that doesn't stop it from being a good movie. Uh, Sin City, A Game to Kill For is not as good as the first one. But I enjoyed it for what it was. I know some people didn't like the second one. But I enjoyed it for what it was. But the first one's better in my opinion. I'm just going to leave those two movies out. Next up, we have 16 Candles, Arrow Video. Um, haven't watched it yet. Next up, we have um, The Sixth Sense, which is M. Night Shyamalan's directorial debut and probably his best movie. And sorry for the glare. Um, Sixth Sense, great movie. What can you say? Um, Snowden, this one was pretty good. Uh, Star is Born, the 2018 remake. Really good remake from Bradley Cooper, which this was Bradley Cooper's directorial debut. And great performances from Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. Not really a big fan of Lady Gaga, but she did really good in this movie. Stranger Than Fiction, I plan to do a review of this movie pretty soon. Uh, pretty good movie, I liked it. Straight Outta Compton, a uh, good movie. Southland Tales, haven't watched it yet, but I know that this movie recently got a Arrow video release. I'll probably look for that eventually. Uh, Suicide Squad, the extended cut, not the worst movie I've ever seen, but it was alright. It could have been better. Superbad Steelbook, classic. Uh, very cool Steelbook, and it's one of my favorite comedies. McLovin? What kind of stupid name is that, Vogel? Where are you trying to be an Irish R&B singer? <laughs> Uh, next up, we have Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Uh, probably my favorite Tim Burton movie. But I don't know. I really enjoyed it, though. It was pretty underrated. Next up, we have Taken. 
and Taken 2. The first one's good, the second one was alright, and I don't have the third one, but I know that the third one's supposed to be terrible. Uh, Taxi Driver Steelbook, one of my all-time favorite movies. I know that this one's going to be getting a 4K release sometime this year. Um, great movie, though. I'll probably get the 4K of it, maybe, when it comes out, and I'll keep the Steelbook. Next up, we have Team America World Police. Very funny movie. That movie probably would never be made today, if you know what I mean. Next up, we have Tenet on 4K. Um, good movie. I enjoyed it. One of my favorite movies from last year. Although, I wouldn't say it's one of Christopher Nolan's best movies, but I still enjoyed it for what it was. It was pretty good. I saw it in theaters. Next up, we have the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Steelbook, the original. Awesome movie. To Die For. Haven't watched it yet. Top Gun 30th Anniversary Steelbook. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, really cool steelbook. And a good movie. I can't wait for the second one. Top Gun Maverick. Uh, Toy Story 3. I don't have Toy Story 1, 2, or 4. But I have this one. Uh, probably the best movie in the series in my opinion. But I don't know. I haven't seen the fourth one yet. But I have seen the first two. The first two movies are good. But I think I like the third one the best. Next up we have... Full... No, I'm sorry. Tropic Thunder. Director's Cut. This movie would never be made today. It's really funny, but it's kind of a shame that this movie would never be made today because of today's uh, social climate and all that crap. Ugh, it sucks that people are, get so offended easily, but, but other than that, it's an awesome movie. What can you say? It's really funny, too. My arm's getting tired. Next up, we have True Romance, one of my all-time favorite movies. I do plan to do a review of this movie at some point. But True, Man True Romance, awesome movie. Next up we have True Grit Steelbook. This is the remake. Haven't seen it yet. Uh, next up we have Tully. Not a bad movie. I enjoyed it for what it was. Next up is the one that I got recently. The Tusky Airmen uh, Digibook. I uh, haven't watched it yet. Next up we have... Underworld and the sequel, Underworld Ev Evolution. Haven't watched those two movies yet, but I probably will eventually. Next up, we have Up, one of the first 4K Blu-rays ever bought. One of my favorite Disney movies. It's a great movie. It has one of the best opening montages I've ever seen. Videodrome, Criterion, very good David Cronenberg movie. And definitely one of the best horror movies in the 80s. The Virgin Suicides, I plan to do a review of this movie sometime soon. I really enjoyed that movie. Really good directorial debut for Sofia Coppola. Uh, next up we have The War of the Worlds Criterion. This is the, the original. Haven't seen it yet, but I picked that one up recently. Warrior, haven't seen it yet. Waltz of Bashir, great animated movie for adults. Watchmen Director's Cut, uh, pretty good movie. I'd like to find The Ultimate Watchmen. The one that's on 4K. I'd like to get that eventually. Uh, Whiplash. I haven't seen it yet, but I want to watch it. Next up, we have The Witch Steelbook. Really good. Really good movie. Really creepy movie, too. Wild at Heart. I haven't seen it yet. The Wolf of Wall Street. Another Mart Scorsese movie. Awesome movie. I believe that might have been the first Mart Scorsese movie I ever watched. I can't remember, though. Next up, we have Utah Mama Tambien Criterion. Haven't seen it yet, but I would really like to give it a watch at some point. I think I will watch it pretty soon. Next up is Zoolander Steelbook. Uh, pretty good comedy. I don't want to get. I don't plan on getting the sequel though. I hear the second one's terrible. And the last one for movies is Zombieland. Picked this one up recently. Haven't watched it yet. And now we move on to TV shows. We're going to start off here with Better Call Saul Season 4. I do have Seasons 1, 2, and 3 on DVD. And I don't have Season 5 yet. I should probably get Season 5 eventually. Um, and I also don't have Breaking Bad, but I have seen Breaking Bad. Uh, Better Call Saul, great show. But I do think that Breaking Bad is a better show. But it's still a great show, though, nonetheless. Better Call Saul. I enjoy it. And the last two for this row are Boardwalk Empire, the complete first season, and Boardwalk Empire, the complete second season. And we're going to move on to um, the fifth row, which will be the final row. And we're going to end um, 
this collection video off with row five. Starting off, we have Boardwalk Empire, the complete third season. Boardwalk Empire, the complete fourth season. And the complete fifth season and the final season. And Boardwalk Empire, really, really great HBO show. Really good mobster show. Uh, Steve Buscemi does a great job in it. And uh, Michael Shannon's also really good in it, too. And a uh, really good show. Pretty violent show, too. I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. Next up, we have Chernobyl, the five-part miniseries from HBO. This is a 4K steelbook. Um, haven't watched it yet, but I hear nothing but really, really good things about it. So I'll have to give it a watch at some point. Next up, we have The Deuce, the complete first season. And The Deuce, the complete second season. And unfortunately, the third season never got released on Blu-ray for some stupid reason. I don't know why, but they never released season three on Blu-ray. Blu-ray for some reason it's only available on DVD. I hate it when they do that to TV shows they release every season of the show except for one season that's not available on one format. I hate it when they do that. But The Deuce, a uh, really good show, pretty underrated show. It's from the creators of uh, The Wire, although I'd say The Wire is a better show, but The Deuce is still a really really great HBO show. I recommend it if you like the movie Boogie Nights. And next up we have uh, Game of Thrones, the complete first season. Game of Thrones, the complete second season. And Game of Thrones, the complete third season. Um, and I don't have the other seasons for it yet. That's because I'm planning to get the 4K box set eventually when it goes down price. I don't really feel like paying 200 and something dollars for it, but I'll probably get that eventually. But Game of Thrones, great show besides the last season. Well, the last season had its moments, but overall the last season of that show was garbage. Like it was it was ass, but the first seasons the first few seasons are great, but the last season is just just plain terrible. But yeah. Anyways, next up we have Mad Men season 1, Mad Men season 2, Mad Men season 3. Mad Men Season 4 with a lenticular slipcover. Mad Men Season 5 and Season 6, which I actually bought Season 1 and Season 6 on Blu-ray yesterday. I used to have Season 1 on DVD, but I'm going to be getting rid of my DVD copy of Season 1. But And I'm obviously missing the last season. I don't have Part 1 or Part 2 of the final season, but I'll probably get that eventually. But Mad Men's a really, really great show. I'm actually watching it for the first time, and I'm currently on Season 5. But if you haven't seen Mad Men, definitely check it out. It's a really, really great show on AMC. While well, it was from AMC. Next up, we have The Pacific. Uh, the miniseries. This is in the tin box release. I like this uh, release. It's in a tin. It's really cool. Uh, really good miniseries. Although I'd say Band of Brothers was better. But it's still a really good HBO miniseries. Next up, we have South Park Seasons 1 through 5. Um, it has all five, well, the first five seasons. Uh, South Park, good show. I don't watch it all the time. I watch it every once in a while, but it's still a really funny show, South Park. I'll probably get the other seasons of it eventually. Next up, we have just a random TV season or volume. This is Tosh.0 oh, Volume 1 Hoodies. Uh, very funny Comedy Central show. Unfortunately, they canceled the show last year, but I do like Tosh.0. Oh. I like it. It's really funny. Kind of gross and pretty offensive at times, but it's it's really funny, though. It's a good show. And last but not least, we have Westworld Season 1, The Maze. Westworld Season 2, The Door. Both of those are on Blu-ray. And Season 3, The New World on 4K. Uh, Westworld, good show. Really good show. Although I think the first season was the best. Season 2 was alright. But season 3 was better than 2, but I think season 1 is still the best season of the series. So, uh, that's my Blu-ray collection. So, that's my Blu-ray and 4K Blu-ray collection video. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys enjoyed it, please leave a like, please leave a comment below, and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you would like to check out my last year's video on my Blu-ray collection, feel free to click the link in the description to watch that video. And feel free to follow me on my Instagram. My Instagram usernames are right there. And until next time, this is Keegan Shepard signing off. Thanks for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.